Good afternoon, everyone. I am here once again to welcome you to our What About Your Story Saturdays. We are now on the fifth segment. That's right, fifth segment inspired by my book, Lying at Heart, a book on discovering courage and greatness within, a personal, a spiritual, and leadership book. Why am I writing this book? Well, I am because I strongly believe that a book is an opportunity to use our voice for the voiceless. As I said before, we all champion different causes, you guys, but as for me, I see a fight. I see a fight to inspire the world to find a great reason to fight for something. Because if we do that, that's where we find strength to flourish and become a lion at heart, a warrior in life. And it's never too late, you guys, no matter what age bracket you are in. Uh, we have got the line within our hearts that we need to unleash, given an inspiration or simply a person who believes in you more than you believe in yourself. So you can do it. And I am one of those persons who believe in every single one of you who are turned, tuned in right now. So let's put an end, being invisible at all times. Tell yourself this, I am invisible no more. And it's possible. My book, Lion at Heart, can be of help when you read it. So on another subject, good news, you guys, I am revamping my personal website. It will be done in a couple of weeks, and that website will definitely invite everyone to share their remarkable stories that could potentially help inspire uh, one of you to be seen, to be heard, because you will have the honor, that's right, you will have the honor to be interviewed in my live segment. We need more lines at heart nowadays. And so my book will be soon released towards the end of May 2020 for those who are looking forward to support me and read it. And it will be a big celebration. Big celebration for my Zoom party launch around end of May. And I'd like to invite every one of you guys. So please drop me a smiley for those who wish to participate. And of course, you will receive an invitation you will have the chance to speak because it's, it will be an interactive uh, Zoom launch, right? And it's like a real party, you guys, but uh, being safe from COVID-19 because it's going to be on Zoom. So, all right, that's it for now, announcements. Then today I am honored to bring you my very good friend, the man of the hour. His name is David Porter, a true lion at heart. David Porter is an innovator and visionary with a career in technology spanning 40 years of experience. Well, David and I met in the Philippines years ago. We actually worked together. I can remember that uh, he has his own business. He is an entrepreneur. So he was one of my resellers in our uh, UK-based company in telecommunications uh, industry. And we became good friends since then. We follow each other and we support each other. So it is such a great honor that, uh, you know, um, we are going to talk about victories over sacrifices uh, now that he's here. David started his career um, actually introducing computers to Australia and was the first person to distribute computer game software. And David turned in his interest to business computing and joined Microsoft in the days long before Windows with the years after the spanning gold rush era of computing. So David ventured also into telecommunications called, if you guys remember, Nokia. And but now back in Tapra, New South Wales, Australia, David continues to be a volunteer advocate for public and community issues. From being the chairman of the FAS uh, Forum Lobbying Change in the local government uh, policy that's, uh, that people could walk their dogs in their own home, uh, David also was recently interviewed in the national television after that uh, January 2020 bushfires about his years of lobbying the government, of warning them of the bushfire risk created by poor policies. So if you can see, he is really a, a voice, a real voice. He's got the voice, you guys. And uh, so, David, I'll turn back to you. Thank you for honoring my invitation to be my special guest, my buddy, this afternoon. What about your Story Saturday segment? We are touching Thanks. the second chapter of my book, Line at Heart, which is about victories over sacrifices. And today, David, we are both called to serve humanity, as many of us right now are wounded. You know, um, they say loneliness is, is massive right now, which um, which really 
kind of like uh, really bugs me right now. So with that said, uh, could you please say hi to everyone and first with your background and then we shall dig deep into the past and what makes you who you are. So David, who is David Porter? Hi Kai, thank you very much. Good morning, good afternoon, depending what part of the world you're <laughs> in. Um, <laughs> uh, yes, it's, um, it's great to be here and thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, I think you've said a lot about my, my, my background there. You know, I love innovation, I love technology. Um, I've worked uh, all around the world. Um, I, uh, I left Australia, uh, I think, in my uh, late 20s or when I was about 30 and, and, were, and um, based myself in the Philippines where I really worked uh, all over Asia. Um, involved a lot in the introduction of, you know, voice over uh, internet protocol. So, you know, new telephony that's, of course, brought down the phone costs. Um, all those sorts of projects. Um, I'm, uh, I came back to Australia because uh, my parents were elderly. So uh, I came back here and recently uh, here in Australia, I did a project for on-demand buses. So in Australia, we have on-demand buses, which means a bus operates um, a little bit across between an Uber and a shuttle bus. So therefore, buses roam around the streets and come and pick you up from your house and take you to wherever you want to go. And that's all controlled online with apps and technology. And um, I did that project here uh, in New South Wales. Um, so that's sort of really where I am right now. Excellent, excellent. That's a brilliant idea, the buses, David. That's why you are really such an innovator. And uh, also, I'd like to thank you, by the way, for helping the Philippines. You created quite a lot of job opportunities out there in the Philippines, in Subic, uh, Subic Bay, because of your um, businesses out there. So thank you very much for that. But uh, my point of view right now is I'd like to sh I'd like you to share, you know, because of what you did, you know, how massive or successful uh, that you have become uh, after all these years, 40 years of, of experience. But of course, let's let's dig deep into what uh, who true oh, true David is. Um, how did you find that courage to to achieve those victories and successes in life? And uh, I'm sure that there are many sacrifices, other than sacrifices, many many obstacles beside that, probably. Would you like to share such uh, experiences so that our viewers can definitely connect with you? Sure. Um, I, I guess what I'd like to, to share with you is, is a couple of things. Um, the first one is that, that real, real change, real improvement comes from within. Um, these days you hear so many people complaining about what society's done to them. And, and sure, some people are, are in a bad situation or a bad luck, but the change that you need comes from within. And I, I guess I don't say that um, as somebody who uh, had all the opportunity at my footstep. Um, you and I had a conversation a few days ago where I shared something with you that I haven't spoken about for maybe over 30 years, um, which was that at 15 years old, I was the victim of a very violent um, uh, assault, um, you know, what they call a, uh, a random attack, um, just minding my own business. And so then at, at 15 years old, I had to have uh, reconstructive surgery to remove bone fragments and, you know, had my face cut right open across the middle there. So a, a very bad situation for a 15-year-old to be in. So I, I, with going to operations and hospital and everything, I dropped out of school. So at 15 years old, with only a school certificate in my hand, no, no, not even a, a high school certificate, you know, I went out into the world. <clears throat> but I always had that passion inside me that, you know, I'm going to, to, to get there, I'm going to, to do something. And um, I, saw, I, saw a, uh, I, I saw a little saying, it was actually a, a photo of a tattoo that I, that I really love, um, and it says, you know, it's not how we fall that define, defines us, it's how we get up again. 
And, and this is just so true because, you know, society uh, and life in general deals us blows and we've got to be able to look inside ourselves to get back up on our feet and to get back on with it. So um, at 15 years old, I took a job making trailers in a trailer factory, if you can believe that. And um, straight away, you know, I wanted to say to the owner of the factory, you know, if you if you put the tail lights around this way, you know, the number plate wouldn't scrape every time you go in and out of a driveway. And and I was given a very clear message by the by the owner of the company. Listen, this is my company and we do it my way. And when it's your company, then you can decide how you want to put the number plate. And I went, Great, thank you. There's my first my first gift in life. Um, is to I know where I've got to be to use my brain the way I want to use it, right? So um, from that point on, you know, I, I, I had the opportunity to, uh, to meet somebody who was setting up a, a computer business in, uh, uh, in Australia, and that, this was the early, early days of, of Commodore, actually. If you remember the VIC-20 and Commodore 64, um, were computers around in the very, very home computers in the very day. I'm talking before that, there was a thing called the Commodore Pet, and we're selling it to, um, to car yards to, to calculate the payments on, on loans for cars. Um, so it was pretty much a glorified calculator. Well, then the opportunity of home computers came along, and I... I uh, I, I jumped up and said, look, I want to be the guy to go out and do the deals. I want to be the guy to go out. So I, I started going out to people like uh, the big chains. So in the US, I guess you've got your Walmarts and your whatever. Here in Australia, you've got uh, Grace Brothers, David Jones, Kmart. These are big, um, big retailers and start doing the deals. Well, I was, I was 20 years old and I'm sort of walking in the door, this, this kid, and well, next thing I know, you know, I've got my own apartment and I'm driving a sports car and I've got six employees working for me at, at 20 years old. And so I thought, look, I'm, this is just passion. This is just driven on passion and a will to, to get up and do something. So I guess for me, you know, at, at 15 I fell and, uh, you know, by 20 I'd, I'd shown how I could rise up again. And um, my career just got even more and more exciting after that. Certainly joining Microsoft in the early days where you actually had meetings with Bill Gates and, um, you know, uh, rubbing shoulders with those sorts of, uh, with those sorts of people was uh, very interesting. Um, David, can, can I hold you off for a moment? Because this sure. is really amazing. You have actually, in, in just a few moments, you have inspired me even more yeah. and I'm just truly really honored that uh, you and I have crossed paths because uh, you said uh, 15, 15 years old, that was a traumatic experience and I'm sure that um, many can relate to, to that. However, it was a part of like, I think it was a great part of loneliness during that time, right? My question to you is during that sort of like a struggle time, uh, do you have uh, some sort of a mentor or some sort of a, a, a guide or, or that you were following or was it just you all along the way or were, were there some inspiration behind that that you took the leap of fate of fighting back again, getting up again? Can, can you um, educate our viewers? Look, I, the only thing I will say is that my, my parents were very strong at that point and, and gave me all the love. Um, that I needed and that was that was the foundation if you like so I knew that I had you know a family safety net there and and you know I will always talk about the importance of family and family is a wonderful thing some families are broken some families are not perfect um, but if they can provide that basic ba basic safety net that you've got somebody there who loves you and somebody Amen. there who got that support to your soul then you know you can you can get out there and achieve things so it was more just an inspiration that I always wanted to be up here 
Um, and even when I'm right down here, I was still looking up here. So it, it's, it's just keeping your focus on where you want to be. Um, a little bit like, you know, driving a car. If you drive around in the rear vision mirror, you're going to crash, right? So you've got to look forward and you've got to look as far forward as you can sure. and uh, look at every opportunity that's coming at you. Wow, wow. That is coming from within, just like you said a while ago. It's nothing about intellectual because you have also hid yourself from, from education, right? You, you quit the education, but even then, that burning desire to change your life, to achieve what you dreamed of, that is with you. No one can take that away from you. And your mm. parents played a vital role. The love, you see, I believe, uh, I, I believe so much in love, you know, because I also came from the impoverished um, lifestyle, but uh, you know, the love was in the air in the family. And uh, when love is there, I believe that wealth and success follows, right? And so you have been so passionate about, you know, I think, you know, knowing you, you're so creative. You never stop thinking of how to innovate, how to get started with any things in life. And um, right now, David, uh, tell us, uh, what have you kind of like, what are your biggest projects right now? And, and, and tell them how you are flourishing in what you are doing right now because of the, uh, the, the inspiration that you can tell them and how you can be a lion uh, at heart. Well, I just, just, before I get on to that, Kai, I just want to mention that you, 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 talk, you mentioned education there again. Um, in my 20s, I did a number of um, certificate courses with the Australian Institute of Management. I did a professional year, which is like a one-year MBA sort of thing. And I, I did those on my own terms, and I did those wow. because I applied the skills that I needed to do what I want to do. So I'm, I'm not saying that education is completely not important. I don't, want to, I don't want anyone to think that. But I used to say to staff when I hired them over the years, I used to say education is important, but attitude is everything. Absolutely. That's, that's been a motto that, that's sort of gone with me um, through, through, through life. And, uh, you know, one of the, the most wonderful things, one of the greatest joys to me, actually, has been that I've had uh, employees come back to me that, uh, that used to work for me and now work for maybe huge international companies. And I'll say, wow, you, you know, you, you've got a great job now. And he said, oh, but I only did it because I knew what you taught me in my job with you. And, and that, that to me is the greatest compliment out because you've, in, in, in having someone work for you and treating them the right way and, and empowering them, um, you know, they've gone, gone on to be able to do better things and to be able to support their family and, and uh, have a, a much better life. Um, because of 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 the way that you treated them and the things that you taught them in a, and to me that's that's one of the greatest gifts that I've ever been given is to hear those words uh, really really uh, uh, powerful priceless yeah it's, yeah it's priceless. priceless yes yeah. because I've known you because I've spoken to some of your employees especially in the Philippines that I was able <laughs> to get to know and they couldn't they really just could speak highly of you because you are a benevolent leader and you are not selfish, you know, you teach them uh, the knowledge that they need. And that is actually becoming a servant leader. You are a true servant leader, a warrior in life. And also the skills, you mentioned the skills. So this is very, very important for our viewers, David, because skills are very important. Other than ambition, of course, skills must be, uh, must be there. We must be hungry for training. We must be hungry for the skills. And that was down to education. We need to educate ourselves, right? Um, so I believe in education as well, definitely, because that's our tool, one of the greatest tools in life, right, to get to, get to success. And so um, tell us everything about what you're doing, currently doing right now. And I know you're enjoying your family here in Australia, but uh, I believe that you are also a community leader 
and how is it uh, doing up there in Australia? Um, really well. Um, you know, as I, I mentioned, the, the on-demand bus project, and that's actually just wrapping up right now. We're just completing. I mean, the, the service still continues, but we're wrapping up the actual original implementation of all the, all the, uh, the technology that drives it. So that, 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 that project is uh, just now turning into operation mode. So that's uh, that's 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 terrific. It gives me a little bit of time to uh, to think about the next big thing. Um, yeah, there's been some some things in the community here that I've got involved in things like uh, you know the council um, put dog prohibited signs up everywhere in the in my local town and and all the way down the coast, and it just wasn't right. And so when I checked the law. Um, you know, I didn't feel the law was implemented in the correct way. Um, so, you know, I um, co-wrote a motion to go before council, spoke at council and, and got, got it all changed um, so people can now walk their dogs. It's a little, <laughs> thing. It's a little thing perhaps, um, but to me it was a, a big thing because um, there was many, many, many people and even businesses that were, you know, like tourist businesses that were uh, uh, dog friendly, that were disadvantaged by these sort of dr draconian, um, you know, can't take your dog anywhere uh, signs, big red signs all over the town. It was it was dreadful. So so it was it was something that just 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 felt good, you know, felt like the right thing to do. Um, so that was that was uh, that was pretty exciting. What I'm also interested in right now is that you know I've done a lot of things in tourism over the years. Oh. Um, I built the first platform uh, in the world actually that that you could manage your property, your hotel property, and all your bookings directly online through the internet. So we're talking about you know I guess uh, 20 years ago now that uh, uh, we put this online. And it was sort of a hotel management system come booking system. So all the bookings could come directly through the internet to the hotel. So we've been doing this with destination marketing and everything for a long time. We're in a situation right now where we've uh, just had bushfires in Australia. that right. Shut the tourism industry for months. We're now uh, straight after that come into this uh, coronavirus scare so tourism is going to be shut down for another couple of months so we're talking about you know <laughs> um, the lack of flow of money that comes from tourism I mean tourism is a is is not just a business but it's actually a, an important part of the the economy um, so I'm I'm really interested and I'm looking at a way to perhaps um, stimulate use technology to stimulate um, the tourism recovery from these multiple events that have uh, that have that have halted that economy. Um, so that's that's something that I'm just paying attention to at the moment right now because we need to get up and go as soon as we as soon as we're all allowed, allowed back outside again. Um, uh, well, we're here in Australia. There are you're allowed outside, but. There's nowhere to go. Everywhere's everywhere's shut except the supermarket. <laughs> so you can only go to the supermarket so many times. Um, so uh, you know, once once this is these restrictions are lifted, we really need to get going. So I'm I'm looking at the way that I can implement some technology to to help with that. Absolutely. And David, you are unstoppable, I'm telling you. I love your passion, I love your beautiful mind, I love your integrity. And that's what we need in this world, in this hurting world. And the creativity, oh gosh. And, uh, you know, uh, a lot of uh, us are uh, viewing you right now. And maybe that tourism in Australia will soon flourish as well. But uh, right now we need to stay safe, of course, <laughs> because of the COVID-19. It just stopped everything. Yeah. But uh, I, I guess this is the time for us also to enjoy our family, right? Which we never had done before most of us are just busy with our circumstances in the business world and all that but uh, sometimes we need to take time out and uh, pause for a second and meditate right so um, it's been a fantastic time being 
being stuck inside is not really being stuck inside. I have, uh, I have a 15-year-old daughter and a 12-year-old son, and um, we've been doing all sorts of little work around the house. So they, they do school work online until about from, from, from maybe 9 a.m. to about 2 p.m. <laughs> and then about, you know, 2.30 or so, we start doing some, some home maintenance. And so, you know, wow. things putting on some new skirting boards and uh, our, our house was affected by the Tathra fires about two years ago and we had wow. damage to the house there. Um, so there's some videos online of my experiences in the, in the Tathra fire. Um, and, uh, so, you know, we're still doing some repair work to the house, uh, from that. And, uh, it's really <laughs> great to get together with the kids and do things that I guess I used to do them with my grandfather and my father and, and learn the basic principles of, uh, of doing physical things, you know, such as, uh, uh, measure t measure twice and cut once. You know, um, so you 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 know what you're doing before you go ahead and cut the piece of wood. You make sure you know exactly it's what you want. And these are these are lessons that go through through life. And um, actually, you know, having mentioned that, I think uh, you know I'm also uh, involved with the Freemasons. Um, oh which yeah, is a tell us about that. Well, it's, it's, it's really a, when I talk about, you know, teaching the kids with tools, I mean, this is really what the, the Freemasons uh, does. Uh, what you do in Lodge is, is, is really related to the lessons in life, who you are as a man, um, how you treat your family, um, and it's all, it's all taught to you with, uh, with basically, you know, using tools. So, um, you know, for example... Um, a lot of expressions that you probably use in your normal life you don't even realise come from the lodge. Uh, you know, things like saying, you know, he's on the level, okay? So, you know, you, you, you use tools to measure something is level and so therefore you can apply somebody being on the level um, in their personality. So now how does that equate to real life? People are like, oh, is it some you know, uh, conspiracy organisation, it's absolutely nothing like that. It's totally uh, about helping people, helping men to be better men. Um, sure. The best example for the United States would have to be George Washington. Uh, I mean, George Washington, I think he, if I've got my American history correct, he could have been a king or a, a ruler of some other description, but he uh, said, no, we, we will go by a system of rule of law and created the system that's in, the, in, in America right now. So the reason that the, the Declaration of Independence and the US Constitution was signed by so many Freemasons was that there are basic principles there that you, you learn in Lodge um, about how to run your life, how to be a good person, how to treat people correctly. And this is, these are important lessons that help us sure. to get through life. And, you know... You're, when you're in the, the boardroom of uh, a multi-billion dollar company in China, just for, a, for an example, mm -hmm. China's not a good right now, is it? But if you're in the, the boardroom of some multi-billion dollar corporation and you've got those ba basic principles of ethics right. and, um, and uh, how to be a good person and to do a, a good square deal, um, people pick up on this and people know that they're working with somebody um, of ethics and, oh, sure. uh, it, you know, it, it, it plays in your favour. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with what the, um, the, the lodges told me. Actually, last night I was thinking there is one little thing I'll share with you and uh, there's a, a, Filipi a Filipino who was a local chief of police who was in the lodge with me in the Philippines and uh, he's now living in America. His, name, his name's James Bader. And um, he, he taught me a lesson when I was just becoming a, a Mason, which I absolutely loved, and I love it to this day, one of the greatest things somebody ever taught me. And that was um, I had this cranky old man who was cranky with me for no reason. I hadn't done anything wrong. And, and James said to me, go and say sorry to him. And I said, sorry to him? I haven't done anything wrong. What have I done? And he said, sorry, saying sorry, you're sorry. 
and being wrong are not connected. You can be sorry for how he feels. You can be sorry that you're in this situation. You can right. be sorry for whatever is going on with him. You're sorry that that's occurred. You're sorry that that feeling is there. So going and saying you're sorry to somebody is not saying you're wrong. Saying right. you're sorry to somebody is that you're sorry about that feeling that's between you, that problem you have, and you want to resolve it. And I think that once we can learn to separate I'm sorry from I'm wrong and just go into it with an open heart, it, it means so much. And that was one of the, my first really big lessons as I be, when I became a Mason. Um, and I love it to this day. Wow. Wow, that's a great wisdom you have just shared to us. I love that. And I truly understand, you know, saying sorry is just not accepting that you're wrong because sometimes you didn't really do something wrong to another person. I mean, sometimes but, you might be wrong, but that but doesn't matter. But sometimes you that's might be wrong. Point. It's just a yeah. matter of, yeah. But you are just saying that, you know, sorry, you don't hesitate to say sorry just because, yeah. you know, it doesn't really mean it. It's like we need to take away the pride in us. And that is a beautiful thing for you to share this afternoon. And so um, how many years have you been in Mason in your Lodge Brotherhood? Because uh, you've been in, in Mason uh, uh, since the Philippines, since we met, yes, right? Yes, yes, so yes. Only, only uh, 11 years. 11 years and it truly yes. shaped you well yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's it's truly shaped you well and uh that's fantastic well thank you very much uh david that was a lot of great information great wisdom inspiration you are a true lion at heart a warrior in life and i am so honored i am so honored that you have said yes to this interview because many of us here who are here watching you and listening to you my goodness would have loved to hear those information and and share those stories that you have shared you know how to have victories in life and over those sacrifices that you had in your life so let me just uh leave our viewers uh this parting message for tonight i just wanted to say that guys love never fails Prophecies will cease, tongues will be silent, knowledge will pass away. Our knowledge is imperfect and our prophesying is imperfect. When the perfect comes, the imperfect will pass away. Our knowledge is imperfect now, but there are in the end three things that last. That is faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of this is love. So I love you all guys and next April 11th, stay tuned for our next Warrior in Life, Lying at Heart special guest. Thank you, David, and have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you soon, buddy. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Kat. It's an honor. Thank you. My pleasure. Ciao now. Bye-bye.